Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next example. So this one's pretty tough as a heads up. It's one of the tougher thinking questions that you could get on the remainder theorem. So if we take some kind of polynomial P of X and if we divide it by X plus one, the remainder is negative eight. When it's divided by X minus three, the remainder is four. And we have to find the remainder when that same polynomial P of X is divided by X squared minus two X minus three. Now, before we get into the technicalities, a couple of things I wanna mention. This x squared minus two x minus three, notice that this factors into x minus three, x plus one, which we're given information about. So sometimes a question like this will say is divided by both of these multiplied together, it will already be factored for you. Sometimes it won't be factored for you. Right, so I thought the non-factor version would be tougher, so that's what I went with. So that's number one, that's the first thing I wanna point out. Another thing I wanna point out is that because we're taking P of X, dividing by X plus one, the remainder is negative eight, what we know is P of negative one is equal to negative eight by the remainder theorem, right? So we don't know what the polynomial is, but we know that at an X value of negative one, it's equal to negative eight. Then we also know at an X value of three, the remainder, uh, the polynomial is gonna be four, right? Because it's divided by X minus three, the remainder is four, that means P of three is equal to four. Basically these are from the remainder theorem. All right, so here's where stuff's going to get a little weird. I'm gonna try my best to explain it here. now. We gotta rewrite the division statement so we know that what? A dividend equals a divisor times some kind of quotient plus the remainder. That's the division statement, right? And then if uh, another way to write it is if we divide everything by the divisor, the dividend over the divisor equals the quotient plus the remainder over the uh, divisor. That's another way to write it, but I'm gonna keep it like this for now. Now the dividend is the polynomial that we're dividing by. So that's gonna be the P of X. So I'm gonna write P of X over here. What's the divisor? What are we gonna be dividing it by? Well, we're gonna be dividing it by this over here right, this x squared minus two x minus three, or this x minus three times x plus one. I'll actually just write it in this format, in this factored format. That's gonna be the divisor. Now, what's the quotient gonna be? We don't know what the quotient is gonna be, but let's just create a general expression for it. Let's call it q of x, like that. It's gonna be some kind of polynomial in terms of x. Right? We don't know what the degree is, we don't know what it's gonna be, so let's just keep it as q of x. And then um, what's the remainder gonna be? Here's where it gets a little tricky. Because we're dividing by a quadratic, the remainder is gonna be one degree less than what we're dividing by. So if we were dividing by a linear function, like this or this, a degree less than that is a constant but we got a quadratic, what's a degree less than that? It's a linear function. And so the remainder we know it's gonna be in AX plus B format, or you could put MX plus B. It's gonna be a line, I'm just gonna put the A there instead. It's gonna be AX plus B. That's gonna be the format of the remainder when we take this polynomial and divide it by a quadratic, right? So the remainder is actually gonna be a line, it's gonna be the equation of a line, all right? So we know this here. Now what? How do we find that A and B? That's basically what we gotta find to find that uh, remainder, to find that uh, linear equation. Well, we can use this information here because we know when X is equal to negative one, P of negative one is gonna equal negative eight. So what we can do is we could plug in negative one for all the x values and notice what's gonna happen. We're gonna have negative one minus three, then we're gonna have negative one plus one. This is what's key, it's gonna be zero here, 
And then this, we don't know what it's going to be. Let's just call it q of 1 or q of negative 1 plus ax, or sorry, not ax, but we know we're dealing with an x value of negative 1. So we would plug in negative 1 for all the x's like that. And we basically know that all of this p of negative 1 is equal to negative 8. And so if you notice, what happens here? Well, this bracket goes to 0, which means all of this is going to go to 0. Because this is going to be 0 multiplying by this and multiplying by that. So what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with negative 8 equals negative a plus b. So basically all of this here is irrelevant. Right, so at an x value of negative 1, we plugged in negative 1 for all the x values. And we know that this p of negative 1 is negative 8. So we got negative 8 equals negative a plus b. Right, so let me rewrite that over here. So you probably see where this is going now, right? Two unknowns. We got to make two equations. We already have one of the equations. The other equation we're going to get with p of 3 equaling 4. All right, so again, pretty unique question, pretty tricky question. Um, so if we follow the same process, if we plug in 3 for all the x's, notice that this bracket would go to 0, which would make all of this 0. And then if we plug in 3 for the x here, we'll have 3a plus b. And then p of 3 we know is equal to 4. And that's pretty much it. And now we have two equations, two unknowns, and now we just simply do a substitution or elimination and solve for that a and b. And then whatever that a and b is, the remainder is going to be ax plus b. All right, so to do that, let's maybe isolate for the b here. So we'll have 4 minus 3a. And then I'm going to plug in this for this b. So I'll have negative a, uh, negative 8 equals negative a plus 4 minus 3a. Bring this over, negative 12, negative 4a. a is equal to 3. And then I could plug in this a value of 3 in either equation. Solve for b. I'm going to plug it in here. So we'll have b equals 4 minus 3 times 3. Let me just make sure everything's all good here. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Right? So b is equal to negative 5. Like that. So the final remainder, 3x minus 5. That is the final answer to this question. So pretty tricky one. Be on the lookout for stuff like this. you got to make that division statement. Realize that the remainder is ax plus b. And then using that information where we knew that, um, I forget now, p of 3 was equal to 4. And then p of negative 1, I think it was, was equal to negative 8. Use that, make your two equations, and then solve for that a and b.